changing your life one story at a time. This is the Chicken Soup for the Soul podcast with Editor-in-Chief Amy Newmark. Hey, it's Amy Newmark with your daily dose of Chicken Soup for the Soul inspiration. And it's Wow Wednesday, which means that today I get to share one of my favorite stories with you. One that will make you feel good about people, despite all that negativity you're hearing in the news these days. There's nothing better than true stories. I think that old adage is true. Truth really is stranger than fiction. And today's story reads like something you'd see in a heartwarming movie. It's from the best-selling book that I made with Deborah Norville called Chicken Soup for the Soul, Think Possible. The story is called Princess's Posse, and it's by Peggy Omarzu, who was a veterinarian. Vets see a lot of heartbreaking situations, and this particular one was heading in that direction. So here's Peggy's story. Peggy was in veterinary school when this happened, and part of her training was to do an internship, which she did at night after she finished her day job. The only nighttime internship that Peggy could get was at an urgent care emergency veterinary hospital located deep within the inner city. Most of the nights there were long and really heart-wrenching. A lot of the clients who came with their pets didn't have the money to pay for their care, and they often came to the clinic too late to save the lives of their pets. Peggy would drag herself home from work at 3 in the morning, exhausted and very, very sad about what she had seen. One night started out to be that same kind of night. An elderly woman arrived, and she was carrying her little poodle wrapped in a bloody blanket, She said they had been out for their evening walk when a large dog had just come and attacked her little poodle named Princess. A man had come and pulled the large dog away as fast as he could, but the dog was still severely injured. Peggy and the chief took this small bloody blanket with this injured poodle inside to the exam room, but they were pleasantly surprised when they opened it up to find the poodle alert. And as they examined her, they realized that she had a lot of cuts but no internal injuries. They would be able to stitch her up and save her, but it would still cost hundreds of dollars. And by the way, this happened many years ago, so it would have been at least $1,000 today just to give you some perspective for the story. So Peggy had to go and break the news to the elderly woman about how expensive this was going to be. And the woman asked how long she could have to pay the bill. And Peggy started her whole sad spiel about how unfortunately the whole bill had to be paid at the time of the service. There was no way around it. There was no installment plan. And then the woman said, no, no, that's not what I mean. How long do I have to pay the bill tonight? And the elderly woman gave Peggy two crumpled $20 bills that she had on her as a down payment so that they could start stitching up the dog. And then she asked if she could use the office phone. Now, this was a while ago before cell phones, so reaching out to people was not as easy as it is today. The woman started making phone calls, and Peggy and the vet started working on Princess, and then everything became chaotic. People kept showing up at the clinic, bringing contributions, and then staying to see how Princess was doing. Everyone said they were there for Grandma, and they wanted to help, and the contributions came a little at a time. From a kid clutching a few coins to a young woman who brought four credit cards and said, put $20 on each one. As the contributions came in and the total grew, the receptionist started calling out the number of dollars raised and the crowd would erupt in cheers. Peggy went out to check on what was going on in the waiting room and she saw this very large family gathered there. She went back inside to the treatment room and she told the elderly woman that all of her children and grandchildren had arrived to support her. But the woman, who was called Grandma, said she had no family. She said, everybody in the neighborhood has always called me Grandma because I've always tried to take care of all of them the best I could. The waiting room was so bursting with people that the chief of the clinic ended up going out and telling them all to go home. They had raised enough money. And Princess the Poodle survived beautifully. And a budding veterinarian had her faith in mankind renewed that night at that inner city clinic where she saw a community come together to support one of their own. Tomorrow's podcast will be about community too, but in a different way. You'll hear a story that I think will make you a lot more excited about your own community. I'm Amy Newmark. Thank you for listening to the Chicken Soup for the Soul podcast today. I hope you'll share it with your friends and family and 
go to our iTunes page to rate it and review it. And if you'd like to read some great tips for positive thinking from the book I mentioned today, Chicken Soup for the Soul, Think Possible, please go to our website, chickensoup.com. <laughs>